Yo, are you ready for another episode of Unapologetically Real with that guy named Mike? If so, hit the intro. Welcome back, everybody. And uh, this episode is going to get a little bit crazy for me. Anyway, I don't know about y'all, but this is a subject matter that has been quite a rabbit hole issue for me for more than a couple of decades. All right. Since I was a kid, I have really battled with this subject matter. And I guess, I don't know. Let's just, let's just fucking dive right into it. Okay. There's no real way to prepare you for this, but this is about the, the years that are not mentioned in the Bible about Jesus's life between the age 12 and 29 years old. So this first video is Billy Carson. A lot of people don't realize that Yeshua, at the age of 12, that AKA Jesus is what he's known in modern times. At the age of 12, he disappeared, like you said, disappeared from the Bible completely. Well, where was he? He went to Egypt. And the proof of this is Coptic Cairo. In Coptic Cairo, the house that he lived in is still there. It's now a Coptic church. The bed, everything is still there. It's a shrine now. This, this Legit. person was real. It wasn't a fairy tale. He actually did exist. He was there with his mom, actually, for some time. And what did he go there for? He went to study and learn the Egyptian mysteries. He was an adept initiate into the Egyptian mysteries. Then he traveled to Tibet to learn the mystery Reiki, healing, Qigong, healing with his hands. That was confirmed by the Dalai Lama. Then he went down into India where he learned the mystic arts, teaching reincarnation all the way back. He read all he the Vedics. Evidence of this in a little known scripture named the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, which is omitted from the Bible. The Vedas. He read all the Vedas. The devil's work. Egyptian the mysteries. Vedics, the Vedas. Which is really the teachings of both the Atlantean so anywhere in the New Testament where you see Jesus speaking or quoted as saying something, in my book, I had the, the thoughts words from the Animal Tablets and Jesus' words side by side, where you can see he's saying the same thing that Thoth was saying 36,000 years ago. Exactly. So, so Billy Carson is a content creator. He is the owner and, I guess, sole proprietor of the Forbidden Knowledge of uh, channel he actually has a channel on uh i can't remember what platform it is i have to, i'd have to look it up anyway i digress um anyway a lot of what he's saying is 100 spot on and i'm the next video i'm going to show is a video of a lady who's actually visiting the site that he's actually talking about. It's a tourist attraction in Egypt, right? That doesn't mean it's real. It doesn't mean it's not real. It just means that this is their history as opposed to what we westernized Christian Americans were taught is real doesn't necessarily mean what we what we were taught is the truth. I'm just throwing that out there. So here's a video of this lady in Cairo, and she's actually going into the temple where Jesus and Mary lived and stayed while he was a student there. And here we go. That's a Moscow mule, by the way. So those two slabs of stone where there was bedding is where Jesus and Mary slept while they were there. I guess we're to assume that Joseph stayed home and was continuing his carpentry business, which made them the money enough to actually send him there, you know? 
again, that's a controversial thing where it's like, well, Jesus was a poor son of a carpenter. Well, if you look back in the in the day, if you look back in history, men that were that were like intricate woodworkers or what we call carpenters, that's a modern colloquialism. The fact that we even associate Joseph with carpentry, which is a 20th century colloquialism. It's a terminology used in, in like modern linguistics. It wasn't even applicable back then. So to even call Joseph a carpenter was kind of a, it's a misnomer. He was a, he was a woodworker. He was a craftsman. They weren't poor. They, they usually got paid pretty good for doing what they did. So Jesus was the, the son of a master craftsman. In woodworking, not some fucking son of a poor carpenter. That's come on, man. All right. So this next one is long and involving and covers a lot of subject matter. Um, But before I get into that, I want to address something. All right. So when Billy Carson and these people are talking about Jesus, okay. The person Jesus Christ, he never actually existed. Okay. Jesus never existed in that context. Okay. There was an individual named the Yeshua of Nazareth. Yeshua was a real person and he was from Nazareth and he did these things. There is no historical record of anybody named Jesus going on any of these travels. Okay. When you look into the, the mythology and the historical, uh, pretext that this guy is going to like infer that it's never actually Jesus that they're talking about, right? They're talking about this young person who is an enigmatic, but yet extremely important person because they were so smart and intellectually advanced for their age, as far as wisdom, healing, naturopathy, herbology, alchemy, like all these different things, right? They were like a master of all these different forms of uh, intellect and, and the philosophy and understanding of herbs and medicines, like the Medusii and the Pharmacon, right? That's what they're talking about. That's what this dude's talking about. All right. So can you imagine being a 13, 14, 15 year old kid and you have such an aptitude towards learning and intellectual understanding of things and like a near photographic memory where you can recant and and retain information and like regurgitate it verbatim, like with such accuracy that most people would consider you to be a a fucking guru, right? That's the kind of person this individual was. So if there's claims that he was in these places as a young person, you would think that more, more Christians would actually grab onto those stories and say, yes, this validates how amazing he was. But unfortunately the orthodoxy of the the religious establishment they want to stick with the status quo they don't want to get outside the box which is why the lost years of jesus is such a fucking controversial thing still because it compromises their assertion of the deification of christ That's literally all it is. It's literally their whole position is the deification of Christ 
is the most important the part of their argument to the point to where they will dismiss anything that potentially humanizes Jesus or Yeshua in any way that it could compromise their position on it being like he is the one son of God. He was the only one and we crucified him and with our devious, brutal, horrific act against the only true one of God, that he sacrificed himself for us, and that that house saved everyone from their sins. That is the probably the biggest lie in Christianity that there could be. And this come from a dude that has a fucking tattoo of a crucifix with a crown of thorns that says more sacrifice. I was raised Catholic my whole fucking life. I believed that the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross was the most important part of the whole fucking story. Right? The first the the forgiveness of sins. That you don't have to worry that you're a sinner. Because I preemptively forgave you of that. So every fucking human being after me will never have to fear death. You will all go to heaven if you believe in my sacrifice for you. That in and of itself could be the biggest fucking lie in every any religion in the history of mankind. Especially if he didn't die. But that's a whole nother podcast. Anyway, this next video, I'm going to show this next video because this dude hits on so many different things of what I'm talking about, right? He hits on things about like Jesus going to these places. And you're like, well, how could he go to these places? Because of his uncle, Joseph of Arimathea. Okay. So I'm going to play the video and we'll discuss when it's done. So what was Jesus Christ doing for those 18 years that are conveniently missing out of the Bible? Well, he was doing some serious work, my friend. We're going to talk 18 about years missing out of the Bible. Sunday. And there is no better time to talk about the amazing life of Jesus Christ in a way you probably haven't heard before. Because this is based largely on Jesus in the Essenes, a series of books from Dolores Cannon. So she was able to go through this powerful, um, you know, um, hypnotic past life regression techniques that she's developed into this person who lived with Jesus, actually Jesus's niece, one of the Essenes, and get firsthand accounts of not only the the Essenes, but like Jesus's life from a totally different perspective because she was with him, okay? So it puts you there, right? And it's so amazing. So here's what we found out through all of this research is that Jesus was in fact one of the Essenes, okay? He traveled with them, he lived with them, he studied with them. The Essenes were an offshoot of um, like Pythagoras's mystery schools of ancient Greece. They were people that were very enlightened and they just knew the power of the human body and the human spirit. And that's what they taught. And Jesus traveled the world. I mean, he went to India, he went to Egypt, he went to uh, London and Britain, and he traveled and studied with not only the Essenes, but the Druids also. And the Druids were a very powerful um, group of Celtics back in the day in, in Britain. And they were the high class, okay? The Druids were... So were Jesus the basically... Lawyers, they were the scientists, they were the doctors, they were the... The, the mystery lawmakers. schools was his introduction into enlightened. Gnosticism. So he traveled and studied with the Essenes, but also studied under the Druids at university. This is what he was doing for 18 years that the Bible just leaves out. The Bible tells you about his birth and his childhood, mm -hmm. and then around age 12, he disappears, and then around age... Literally, one page he's 12, the next page he's 29. That amount of Dude's 100% like, right. That's a very important chunk of this man's life. He was traveling and studying. The most influential a, part of his life is left out of the Bible. Basically like a spiritual Jedi, an energy worker, right? Someone who 
Um, news, it's like saying, hey, I'm going to teach, and I'm going to tell the story of your life, but I'm going to leave all of middle school, high school, and college out. Like him because they wanted people to work the most them. influential parts of say, your hey, fucking you, like the church is powerful human is powerful, like lowly identification as a person dude and we're gonna leave power. all that and out and we're gonna, gonna tell the complete story of your life are powerful you're super powerful Motherfuckers say what people. They yeah no that in the bible but they make it sound kind of magical what he did was he would tell people put their hand up and he would draw a circle on the palm of their hand and he would teach people how to heal with their hands, right? That's very similar to Reiki, isn't it? But you're healing yourself. He didn't heal you. He taught you how to heal yourself. That was the power of Jesus. And a lot of these like parables and stuff in the Bible, the reason why when you read the Bible, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's kind of, it's like told in such like a, almost like a children's storybook kind of a way. Exactly. You know, burning bushes and things like that. He, the people he was with, Noah, was, right? Just and Jonah folks, and the fish. A lot of them weren't educated. They couldn't read. They couldn't write. They didn't have like any sort of higher level education. Yeah, so they were he dullards. Was trying, he was struggling to communicate these concepts to people, and he found the best way was through nature. He would just explain it using metaphors and nature, right? So that's why a lot of the parables and stories in the Bible are seem a little odd to us. You got to think. Go back thousands of years. No, because the, the true measure of a uh, genius farm. intellect is he being able to, to take complex yeah, situations and or circumstances right? so and for explain instance, them to a layman in an, an extremely simplistic way and have them like fully like understand it. That is where the true measure of, of a genius. Segregated them from the rest of the, the population. So and, every guru uh, like knew this sick, and knew how to adapt that and to make that applicable into their teachings. Jesus assembled this team of people, right, that would go to these leper villages and stuff. Mary was one of his his top people, and they would he would always have people that did different things. So he would have carpenters to help fix up the houses and stuff. He would have um, like the alchemist to help like mix up potions and mix up you know food and, yep. and stuff to help the sick people and he would have doctors and stuff Mary like was pictures. literally his so he didn't do everything himself. Mary Magdalene was his right hand lady was like a leader because he just had amazing she was also of the Christos the people that taught him so you got you guys need to really look that shit up and he was just a remarkable person like he he had natural spiritual abilities he had heightened awareness he had just an amazing grasp of knowledge and understanding he learned things super because fast. he was taught he naturopathy was right? and herbology so and alchemy through these other traditions is often portrayed as this like almost like magic, and applied them to you know, where um, he came from a cool person but the story that we get from dolores cannon that first person view from his niece was that he was a mortal man he was just an exceptional man i think he was probably what we would call an ascended master like yep. a very old advanced I would agree with that. that comes into Earth um, with a mission. Like a star seeds that we've talked about in other videos. He was an exceptional... And like I've said before, Jesus was a huge fan of the Buddha. Avatar body. Um, when, when he reached Tibet and learned of the story of Buddha, he, he was, was, of course he was a son of God, we're all in awe. Children of God. But it was that he and wanted to obtain enlightenment as Buddha the, did. The, the system. And, and according to people, their stories, the he did. Was powerful, that they and were that's low, when he... Right? They were meek. He taught people the opposite. That you are powerful. And he just showed people... He apparently obtained the vision of to, his you know, own death. Like and that's when he was called personal, back home. You know, power. And that's what he taught people. According to some stories, allegedly. From Jesus and his life. Um, and that's why, ultimately, <laughs> he was murdered by, you know, that, that Roman, you know... Uh, basically mayor Pontius or whatever um, who just didn't like the fact yep, that he, he was, was a rebel rouser and had this following and people respect he was a new agey rebel rouser authority and power away from he's the shaking up the establishment so we got to take him out and that's so exactly what they did all the rest and all the religious stuff but those are just kind of the the biggest takeaways from Jesus's life that he wasn't just missing for 18 years like the Bible likes to say we know what he was doing and the Essenes you know, are a very important part of this. I mean, they're the ones where we get the, the Dead Sea Scrolls from. And if you read the Dead Sea Scrolls, it's way more enlightening than any other books in the mm -hmm. Bible. These people, you know, hold the key 100%. to ancient knowledge and wisdom. And they taught it to Jesus. He went around, taught it to everybody else, and he was killed for that. And then the Dead Sea Scrolls has a lot of the same knowledge and wisdom in it. And they were taken out of the Bible, out of the canon, and hidden away and then once they were discovered it was supposed to be one of the biggest discoveries in the history of mankind and then that was squashed away do you ever hear anyone talking about it no it's still 
this weird like it's this it's this almost like secret it's like it's a secret he's right and then they try to make it secret again so he's right to hide the true story of jesus what he was really teaching people what he was really about which is you're powerful not the modern people. academics and cherry picking bullshit the to validate know, um we're doing is the old original models be, um hidden as well so anytime someone goes through which is so effort, despicable thousands of years of coordinated effort to silence um something that means it's important okay so look into the dead sea scrolls look into jesus and the essenes by Dolores canon and the true story of jesus and his main mission like he doesn't want to be worshipped he never wanted to be idolized that was all stuff that was just thrown out there later he wanted people to know that they are powerful that they have sovereignty and that they're special and that they can heal themselves okay so that's the most important thing that you need to know about jesus christ let me know what do you guys think about the subject and have a beautiful day peace I and mean, have a beautiful day. No, so there's a lot of things he's right about. And one of the first things I want to cover is the fact that Jesus is not the, the the person Jesus never actually truly really existed in the way that we think. Because I'm going to say that because the Letter J was not adopted into the modern Latin languages until like 1524, I believe. Um, so, okay, it's 1524... Jesus, or sorry, letter J exists. <clears throat> Oops, come on, internet, what the fuck? So I digress. Anyway, so literally what we have is in 1524, an Italian a Renaissance Germanian grammat grammatarian like expert, whatever you want to fucking call him, um, Gian Giorgio Trisno adopted the letter J into these Latin based languages um, as a way to fill the gap in like, I guess like phonetic pronunciation. Okay. So 1524. So 1524. All right. It's where we have the first indication of the letter J, which means Without a shadow of a doubt that the word and name and person Jesus did not fucking exist until 1524. If you continue to look it up, the letter J is actually a character stolen from a Phoenician character that has nothing to do with the pronunciation of the letter J. In fact, if you look at the etymology, etymology is the history and evolution of a word that J never actually started with the guttural dj. It was actually originally ya or wa. It was more like a, a ya or a wa. Hence Yahweh and Jesus, right? So when you're talking about Jesus, the first indications of Jesus are Jesus. And that's only after 1524. So what did they call Jesus before 1524? What did they call him? Zeus? Because that's the Greek God. 
Zeus. Or is it a hybridization of this Yeshua character and Hare Krishna, which already existed, and Zeus? I don't know. There's a lot of questions that need to be asked and a lot of questions that need to be answered. So um, I guess I'm going to end it on there because I don't really don't have too much subject matter to cover. Um, other than the, the, those videos, it got me on a little diatribe there and got me sidetracked. So anyway, the point being is, do you even fucking know who Jesus is? Have you ever taken the time to look it up and study it and maybe research who's Jesus and did he really exist? And what is his perceived existence based on? I don't know. The rabbit hole is pretty deep. I've gone pretty deep into the rabbit hole. And this is just one video of some of the things that I've gone deep down into the rabbit hole of Jesus Christ. And I promise you, I will give you more because there's a lot more to give. And with that, keep it strange, y'all.